Hello and welcome to all. This is Ankana, the assigned moderator from IGCP Group. I wholeheartedly welcome all the delegates across the country. We are fortunate enough to get supported by the doctors. Thank you all the doctors for taking out time to join us today. Now I am taking this opportunity to welcome today's master doctor, none other than the eminent speaker doctor, Padmashri doctor, Indra Hinduja ma'am. Ma'am is MD, PhD in Fertility, Assisted Reproduction Specialist, Obstetrician and Gynecologist at Incas Infertility Clinic, Baby Science IVF Clinic, Jaislok Hospital, Bridge Candy Hospital Trust, Piri Hinduja Hospital and Saifi Hospital. Now with the help of Dr. Hinduja Ma'am and her wonderful insights, we will be taking a close look at today's topic which is Assisted Reproductive Technology. Without further any delay Ma'am, I would like to hand over the session to you. Kindly proceed with your topic. Thank you, Anka. Thank you. Thanks for my introduction. I will just proceed with my slides now. <clears throat> Today, I'll be introducing the subject, which is assisted reproduction and commonly known as test tube baby procedure. I would try to introduce and why and say what exactly IVF is. Okay. Assisted reproduction is the technique in any procedure where only the oocyte, that is, only the egg of the woman is removed from the body beforehand and returned back in her body as a oocyte itself or it is grown further to zygote when it has already made the sperm or you can transfer as is an embryo. But only handling of the sperm outside is not considered as assisted reproduction. Now the number vary of procedures which come under assisted reproduction is first most important is in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer. In vitro fertilization means the fertilization outside the body and whatever the embryo develops after meeting the sperm and the egg is called embryo and returning back in the uterus. If you are just putting the egg and the sperm together, not growing outside, it is called gift. At the early stage, when the egg and the sperm has met, it is called zygote. So zygote, when we transfer, it is called zift because we transfer into the fallopian tube. So gift is a procedure of transferring egg and the sperm back in the fallopian tube. Zygote is the after developing 24 hours inserting Prost is almost the same. It can also call that as a zygote or pronuclear stage embryo. Now, uterine insemination, which we call it the sperm transfer, is not considered. But at the same time, the egg is removed from the body, transferred into the fallopian tube, and sperm is ins inseminated from below into the uterus, it is called freedy. Direct, sometimes the sperm is also instilled in the abdominal cavity and intrauterine insemination is nothing but that the wash the sperm and put it into the uterus at the time of ovulation. Now, before you, I to make you understand that, let me first explain. Yes, let me explain to you first. The egg is released from the ovary, which is there in the white, small, very egg-like transcript. And the finger-like processes of the fallopian tube grab that egg and that egg comes into the fallopian tube. If, if at the same time in the vagina, the sperm is being deposited either by IUI or natural sex, 
the sperm migrates from the lower passage to the boat in a point a lower message and then go through the tube and meet the sperm and egg in the fallopian tube you can see on the left hand side one egg and there are a lot of sperms are being attached to the egg and once the egg penetrates into the egg that it forms the zygote that is two round structure what you can see they are two nuclei later the nuclei membrane breaks and one nuc becomes one nucleus and that is the time of zygote so the first stage cut fusion of the egg and the sperm second is zygote and this zygote starts dividing into two cell four cell eight cell and like a lump of cells it is called borula and this stage this gets divided into two parts it's a clump like thing which is big on one side arrow ki the phone nahi hai see this is the pap mass which is called inner cell mass and this circular forms the placenta and this is called blastocyst and that is the stage it comes into the uterus and gets implanted here or there and forms the baby now in ivf what happens is the we give some drugs to the ovary to develop more than one egg at a time why because it is known that if we transfer more than one embryo we get better success rate so for us to get more embryo we have to administer some drugs to develop more eggs once these eggs are matured which are seen by sonography and the blood test then the vagina transducer the sonography is done from below along with the sonography the needle goes and we puncture that follicle and remove the egg and such all the eggs which are been removed they are put in one dish at the same time the sperm has been collected from the male partner and see this the eggs coming into the tube after sucking from this with the needle now from the male partner the sperm is been asked and these sperms are added to the egg and when egg and the sperm meet that is called fertilization now the same thing when the sperm is defective or the egg is not accepting the sperm or sperm is weak or less then we what we do it we collect the egg and take the sperm in this needle and inject into the egg rather than allowing that sperm to go inside and this procedure is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection and which is commonly known as icsi now either this is a fertilization in the body or in the dish or in the laboratory we do this once the embryos are developed like i showed in the previous slide those embryos are collected into the cannula and then they are deposited into the uterus and that is the embryo transfer now which are the cases in which these procedures are being done one is fertility problem second to prevent the birth defect and third for the research purpose because this is the only procedure where ethically and legally we get the human egg or the sperm which are unused for the research now let's talk about the fertility problem the most important cases in which ivf or assisted production helps is one the assisted reproduction one is this when the fallopian tubes are irreparably damaged or they have a very low sperm count usually in the normal conception minimum 
25 million sperm is required in the man to have the normal conception. But when the sperm is less, one of the techniques which I have already mentioned are being applied. If there are not very low, then we do IUI. And if it is very low and weak sperm, we do IVF. And then there are cases where we really do not know the cause at all. That is idiopathic, unknown or unexplained infertility. Sometimes the woman is like an allergic to the sperm or sperm is allergy to the sperm and it forms the antibody. Or what I showed you in the beginning, the uterus and the part lower, lower part of the uterus is called cervix and when the cervix is defective and does not allow the sperm to migrate up and the most common condition in our country is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is the condition which can affect the fallopian tube, which can affect the uterus, which can affect any part in the body and any part which gets healed but the function to great extent of the fallopian tube is lost. In that case, you have to do IVF. Endometriosis and which is also there are some adhesions due to the infection like appendix, like and gastroenteritis, like colitis, like tuberculosis. And because of that, the tube are adherent and that they are affected and they lose the capacity to pick up the egg from this. Or there is a history of abnormal babies in the family. So in that case, you can study the embryo and see whether the embryos are normal and the embryo can be transferred. Another condition is sex link disease like hemophilia. You know it, hemophilia, the man is affected and the female is the carrier. In such situation also, that you can always identify whether that male is affected or normal and you can insert the healthy embryo into the uterus. Now, many other research projects like development of contraceptives, antibodies, male infertility, why cancer occurs, research factors regulating the how much eggs doesn't grow and why the woman has got repeated abortions. These all things can be studied by studying the embryo. Now, most important requirement of IVF is the woman should have at least one functional ovary so that she has their own eggs. And functional receptive uterus, there are no defect in the lining of the uterus inside where the embryo is going to implant. And the semen, which is clear, good sperm, without any infection. So these are the main three requirements of that. How do we select? First, we think whether this patient is requires IVF. Then we select the drugs to give so that we want more eggs. Now, when the drugs are being given, the monitoring is very important that we don't want immature eggs, neither we want them to hypermature. So monitoring of the growth of the follicles and growth of the egg is important by studying the sonography, size of the follicle and the blood test where and when required. OPU is nothing but the collection of the pickup of the egg from the follicle that the procedure is called OPU. Second is the sperm preparation. We have to prepare the sperm, we have to remove unnecessary cells, we have to clean and wash so that the only motile healthy sperms are available. Once we try to meet egg and the sperm by any technique, by adding them into the dish containing egg or by injecting the sperm, 
we study the quality of the embryo before transfer. And these embryos are also replaced back into the uterus. And after replacing back into the uterus, some drugs are given to support the implantation and to grow the baby. And after two weeks to 20 days, one can study the pregnancy. If the embryo has been implanted, then your pregnancy test will be positive. <clears throat> then once the patient is selected, we have to see whether she is fit for the whole entire procedure. So we have to take the proper history. Her total examination has to be done from her obesity point of view. Any infection she has, she is healthy enough. Also, we examine the breast and blood test that she has got good blood hemoglobin and she has no abnormality like thalassemia or any other blood disorders. And on that, we also study the hormone that her ovaries are functioning. She has adequate eggs in her ovary and we see that that she has adequate egg, that ovary is functioning, which we call ovarian reserve. We study by studying the hormones. Also, we have to do proper semen examination that male factor is normal. And then uterus itself that doesn't have any tumor like fibroid, doesn't have any growth into the uterus. There is no abnormality of the uterus. There is no defect in the uterine cavity and if required, we insert the telescope which is called hysteroscopy. Also, we study if the side, if the fallopian tubes are badly damaged and if there is any collection of the fluid that is called hydrosalpin and many a times this water from the fallopian tube which is collected in the form of hydrosalpin regurgis or throws the embryo out and the embryo gets washed out. Now it is studying that more embryo we transfer better success rate is there. So one embryo when we say the success rate initially was 10%. When we used to put two then it was around 22 to 25%. <coughs> then we insert three it comes to 30 to 40%. But after that, even if you insert 100 embryo, the pregnancy rate is not so high. So therefore, if we have maximum two good embryos, then even if the twins occur, it is acceptable. The babies will grow well and we should have the healthy baby. These are the number of drugs which are being given to have more eggs, it can be oral tablets, it can be injection, it can be combination of tablet and injection, or by giving them the hormones beforehand, one can program it and decide as and when you want to do the get the period and start the drugs because the drugs are always started with the connection of the period and that is the time when the nature itself is trying to grow the spontaneously indigenous eggs. So instead of that, we give the drugs so that more than one egg grows at a time. And there are different drugs listed here. Let's not go into detail. And these are the hormone tests which and the sonography to do that we have reached the maturity of the egg properly. We do estrogen, we do thickness of the lining, we see how the size of the follicle, whether it is growing very good and simultaneously uterus is also growing to become receptive to receive the embryo and that the last two drugs show, the last two hormones that is LH and progesterone Sometimes when the follicle reaches to its optimal size, spontaneously it bursts. So we are unable to collect that. To avoid that, these two hormones are done that maybe were not too average and therefore the other eggs are not available. 
So this is the way we used to collect in the beginning. Way back in 1966, the big incision was made on the abdomen to collect the egg. In 1970, of course, the laparoscopically, we used to put the needle, have a look at the scope and identify the follicle and aspirate. And then came ultrasound in 1981. Initially, from the ultrasound guided needle was put from the above. Sometimes we had also put it through the bladder. Sometimes we have put the needle through the urethra. And now, of course, the needle is put in the vagina. That is vaginal tra transducer. And along with that, the needle is inserted, which I showed you in the picture. Therefore, the commonest is first laparoscopy and now it is ultrasound. This is how on the ultrasound the looks and these something like two follicles, the white dot which you see here from here, the needle is coming inside along this line and whatever the contents are there, they are being aspirated. And then the fluid which is collected, uh, this is This is the fluid and in that we look for the egg. The egg is, each one is an egg. These are the surrounding cells. This is the nucleus and all these eggs are collected and from all each follicle one, one, one. And then <clears throat> advantage of ultrasound is no risk of major surgery, suitable Procedure which can do repeatedly, no cuts, no incision, no stitches. The surgical anesthesia is very short. It can also be done under local anesthesia. And hospitalization is one or two hours. Therefore, the cost is reduced. If it was on laparoscopy, minimum six to eight hours we used to keep the patient in the hospital. Now, these are the different type of fluids in which we grow the egg and also we grow the uh, sperm or try to meet egg and the sperm. These are the different type. Of course, now the culture media is available commercially and in initially we used to prepare that in the laboratory in-house. Now, these are the different techniques which are used to prepare the sperm to collect the motile, healthy, good sperm. So, once the sperms are prepared, they are added to the egg like this. This is actually a video, friends, but I don't think I can show you. I'm trying to play it so that you know how we do it. Never mind. Uh, so we add it next day or we see the single sperm as you have seen here. You can see one single sperm which has been taken into the needle. There is seen the sperm there and it is injected into the egg. And once the sperm has been injected into the egg, then after 24 hours, we have a look at the egg. You can see two circles here, one here and one below that. So this is called zygote or pronuclear stage embryo. You, I saw you, I showed you the picture this is a real zygote of the human. And we grow it outside. After 24 hours, you can see four cells. And after four to five days, you can see blastocyst. And this is the inner cell mass, which forms the baby. And this single layer, which is around it, that forms the placenta. 
and such embryos are taken into the catheter to one or two and this catheter is inserted under sonography guidance here you can see and this is the lining of the uterus and this is where we inject and then give her support of the hormones which we say that to develop or to hold the baby the uterus has been given some drugs like we give HCG or progesterone or they are injectable oral or vaginal and then after 15 days you do the test for the pregnancy and this is how that woman had twins and two twins I am showing you which are born after nine months. This is one. Second one is not there because it was taken for the cleaning. Now let's say ki where, where and how the success depends upon that what is the reason what we are doing. The age of the woman, we get less success rate. If we give up, more drugs or less drugs to stimulate also changes the quality of the eggs. And embryo transfer technique has to go very smooth. Embryo quality which are being inferred, we also have to be very good. And it sometimes what happens, once we remove the catheter, along with the negative pressure, embryo comes back. So we have to look into the under the microscope that they have not come back and then you have to reinsert. Repeated insertion can also lower the success. And for the implantation, we have to give supportive drugs and then wait for the good results to come. Now it is shown that blastosis transfer always gives rise to the better success rate because only 60 to 70 percent of the embryos go up to blastosis because they are healthy. Therefore, the healthy embryos give the better success rate. One more thing that many a times we cryopreserve those embryos. Why? Because during development of more eggs, there are high levels of hormones in the body. And these high levels of hormones in the body may affect the lining of the uterus and therefore receptivity of the uterus. Therefore, what we do is that we remove those eggs, fertilize them and preserve them. Next month, when the woman gets the period, we always give the either no drugs or only prepare the endometrium or try to develop only one single follicle and transfer those cryopreserved because the success rate in such cases is higher than transferring in the first treatment cycle. The out, when I showed you those uh, eggs, when the needle was going, there was, can I go back? See, this, this covering, all along outside the egg is called zona pellucida now this zona pellucida is sometimes very thick and therefore sperm is unable to break that like a shell of the egg so in that case what we do is mechanically we Track the zona so that the space is created for the sperm to enter. Either we crack it or we get it digested by giving some drugs like acetyrrhoid solution or with the laser we cut the zona. So these are the different ways to improve the success rates. And in that case, I also mentioned that we can also put on the tube either the egg and the sperm or zygote or the embryo into the fallopian tube. Why? Because 
it may give rise to better success rate. And where it is being done, it is especially when the cause is unknown, but the tubes are healthy. Mild endometriosis when the tubes are slightly pulled, or adhesion and all that. And failed artificial insemination, either of the donor or of the husband. Or if the only cervix is affected, or the sperm has got some antibodies, one can do the egg and the sperm inject into the fallopian tube or low sperm count. Why all this? I will tell you that. The, but for doing this, you have to have a one healthy, good functioning fallopian tube, which is morphologically normal. And there should not be no infection in the sperm, otherwise she is likely to get salpingitis or infection of the tube. It is considered to be advantageous to insert into the fallopian tube because we know it that egg and the sperm are meeting in the natural site and natural place and natural environment which is created by the God. And minimal handling that we are not touching egg and the sperm outside. The developing of and while we are inserting the embryo, we may injure the lining of the uterus. And there is no trauma at all. So therefore, probably the success rate is better. However, there is information why we have given up that technique because there is no evidence that vague and the sperm we are putting, whether they are meeting or embryo, which as I hope we are putting, whether it is progressing, has it developed to blastosis. So we don't get any information. It involves two procedures. One, remove the egg and next day you transfer the sperm and the egg. Increase ectopic pregnancy because if the tube is unhealthy, it might grow into the tube, the high chances of ectopic pregnancy. And if it fails, we don't know exactly why it is failed as in the natural conception. We don't know why that woman is not conceived. And once you get good answers and transfer the embryo, and you can have this lovely baby thanking to you. Thank you. How do I go? Thank you so much, ma'am, for this comprehensive talk. And the PPT was so much informative. Ma'am, we have received few questions from our participating doctors. With all your permission, can I put them across? Sure. Okay. So the first question is, are there any recent updates on the legal and regulatory aspects of ART and how do they vary across different regions or countries? Well, um, earlier we only used to follow some guidelines which were given to us and whatever the doctor feels is right. Now there are lots of regulations which are introduced by the government of India where the age of the woman, husband's age, single parenthood, then they have not allowed that after certain age role of third party like donor and the, the egg or donor sperm and the surrogate. For that there are a lot of strict rules. But I'm sure those regulations which God, I mean, government has laid out, they are quite good. And it is not only to save the doctor, but also to help the patient. And also misuse of the technique. So probably they are quite good. And we likely to uh, really never misuse that, which all these scientific advances which has occurred, most of the time it was misused and they are being banned now. For example, sexing of sex determination was very useful for some of the cases like sex-linked disease or something.
but then we started misusing the technique. Therefore, it has been banned. I think it was rightly done so. So this way, the technique of IVF is also very, very, very advanced. And it has a lot of advantages, but there are like uni as well. So it can be misused. Therefore, probably these laws which have been laid down by the government, they are very useful and feel that this will never be misused. And only the needy people will take the advantage. Can't hear. Okay, we are moving to the next question. That is, what is the current evidence and clinical practice related to ovarian tissue cryopreservation and its application in infertility preservation for cancer patient and others? Well, for the cancer patient, this is a very, very good, uh, useful technique. And uh, only disadvantage is this, that after the tissue has been uh, preserved, the, in the tissue, we get mature, immature, both type of eggs. And as and when we require and when we try to use the perfect technique, yet has to be standardized to grow immature gametes outside to take them to fertilizable capacity. But I'm sure soon the technique will be available and it will be very useful for the cancer survival. Earlier, we had thought of transplanting that tissue back into the woman or to the donor, but it has got its own complications. If we, the tissue has any cancerous cells, then she are likely to develop the relapse of the cancer. Or if we transfer into the donor, the donor is likely to get the cancer. Therefore, only the embryo which are matured and grown in vitro all will be used for the cancer survival patient. It's a very, very, very useful technique. And we have been preserving ovaries as well as the sperm. And for the young boy who cannot give the sperm, we can preserve the testicular tissue as well. Ma'am, you are on mute. You, you are on mute. Kindly unmute yourself. Yeah, yes. So, ma'am, I'm repeating the next question again. That is, what strategies or emerging technologies can help address challenges related to recurrent implantation failure and recurrent pregnancy loss in ART patients? Well, as far as the recurrent implantation failure, it is a very problematic case. It's really pain in neck. Many a times we really cannot solve that problem. And if the woman is desperate to have, <clears throat> there we advise her to go for surrogate. <clears throat> and it is a good indication for the surrogate. And whereas repeated implantation failure with the extensive investigations in the man and the woman, 
and the fetus. In spite of that, if it is not developing, the best thing to identify the exactly whether there are any metabolic disorders or anything which we cannot solve the problem. In that case, we ask them to take the help of the third party, either the egg or the sperm. Because now it is possible to only study the egg by studying the polar body biopsy and the sperm also if there is a defect. So in that case, you can take the help of third party. But if unexplained infertility and repeated failure where we do not know the cause and the woman is not really accepting the surrogacy, then probably we cannot do anything. And so also, if they are not ready to take the egg and the sperm from outside, then of course you have to, best case will be adoption. Moving to the last question of today's session, that is, how has genetic testing evolved in the context of ART and what are the most current recommendations for pre-implantation genetic testing in ART procedures? Each and every case of ART should not be subjected to the PGT or PGD and all unless the woman is old or there is a good indication. Otherwise, I feel that even though abroad mainly each and every embryo is being tested before transferring, it's a good idea. But we are only testing it for the known cases or the, any history is available. But if we do only the chromosomal study of everything like NGS and all, we can say that chromosomally the embryo is normal. It's a really very good idea and uh, we must see that we should be doing it for, but the tests are very expensive and not available everywhere because abroad they always study each and every embryo before they transfer. But if the history of any major illness they should know any major problem, any major syndrome, any major condition, it should be tested regularly. But normally because of the NGS, because of the availability of the SPEN media, non-invasive, non-touching, all that study, we can study even the medium and say that this embryo is normal. It's very simple. It is normal without handling the embryo and we get the good results, I think it should be done as they are doing abroad. Okay, thank you ma'am for answering all the queries of our doctors and I'd also like to all the participating doctors for your continuous participation at our platform. Thank you once again ma'am for your valuable time and for being with us at our platform MedTalks and sharing such valuable insights to us. So with you, all your thank you very much also. Thank you. Yes. So with all your permission, can we sign off the session over here? Yes. If no question, nothing. I'm happy that we shall part. I must say thank you to you all people and thank you to all the people who were there to listen to me. And I'm sure that we will get a chance to meet again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Tell me. Do yes, ma'am. Ma'am, and yeah, ma'am, do you have any another few two to three minutes uh, for a patient centric small short video? So it will be like a patient centric video that you can discuss any treatment or any awareness, or you want to give any small message to the patient, okay, regarding any treatment or anything. It will take only two to three minutes only. So will that be possible now, ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, for that, we have to go to another link. I'm sharing the link over your WhatsApp. Just uh, the same way you have to enter on the same link. Okay? Can can we not see it, Bapre? Because going and searching for the link and to come, it will take some time. And I'm already late for my consulting. Um, can I see it? Send me on email. 
uh, sorry? If I see that video on my email and you show me the participant. Mm -hmm. uh, this because session link, have you seen about this session link? Yeah, special link which a patient has prepared. Okay, uh, my friend, I can send you the link over your uh, mail. Okay. Will that be okay? And when can I, can I shoot that video, ma'am? According to your okay. company, it will take two to three minutes. When can we see you? Okay. Mm, to, today itself in the evening. Today? At what time? Eight minute. Eight minute. Okay. Okay. Dusra link do ne me kitna time lagega? Thoda time bhejenge jo. Acha chal link bhej. Fata. Ma'am, you are on mute. मैंने म्यूट किया ही नहीं था। सॉरी। सेंड मी द लिंक। ओवर यू व्हाट्सएप। आई एम सेंडिंग मैम। या। I just have sent over your mail, ma'am. We are leaving this room and we will join on that link. 